what's good we're back in this thing today we're going to be going over this fisheye rotation transition it was done in the isaiah rashad lay with you music video directed and edited by omar jones it's kind of a transition where the clip spins in a circle and gets smaller and bigger it's a really cool transition and i'll be showing you kind of how he did it and then i'll be showing you a digital way that if you didn't set up your shot when you were shooting it you can still kind of do a similar effect if you're new here what's good my name is brian i make music video tutorials here on youtube and sometimes some vlog footage basically just stuff in the visually creative scene so if you're interested in any of that go ahead and subscribe we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year i upload three times a week so there's bound to be some videos that you're gonna like while you're at it if you could go ahead and drop a like and a comment it really does help push my content to other people and helps me grow as a channel and is greatly appreciated if you want to level up your music video editing game and speed it up at the same time you can go over to my website briandelmata.com check out my packs and presets they're designed to save you time while editing as well as give you some really cool looks i spend a lot of time making these products so they're really high quality and i have a bunch of tutorials on how to use them so i'll have a playlist link below with all the tutorials as well as the website yeah that's enough talking though let's get into the video and break down this effect so first off i kind of just want to show you the effect and the transition so here's an example I found in the actual music video. It's really clean and the movement and keyframes are really, really nice. And you can see you can do a lot with this concept of your footage being in the circle. So the way he did it in the actual music video is I'm pretty sure he was shooting full frame and just on a really, really wide lens. Like example, like a fisheye or just something very low millimeter. I went ahead and tossed on my fisheye on my camera and I'll show you what that looks like just here in a second. You can see as a similar look and all you'd have to do is mask out the lens here, add like a feather on that. I'm pretty sure that's what he did in the clip itself. So you can see if you feather it and maybe if you tweak mask a little bit, you'll get something very similar to what he had in the video. I'm almost positive that's what he did. And then he just animated this. And then obviously it takes a little bit of pre-planning because you have to have a wide angle lens on a full frame sensor. So if you don't have that, I'm gonna show you a digital version and we're actually just gonna be doing that that way. But the same applies if you actually went ahead and pre-planned it, you could do something just like this. So first off, here's a little bit of the movement I came up with, very similar to his, but I'll be showing you all the concepts that he went over in the music video. So first off, what you're gonna wanna do is just find a spot where you want the effect to take place. This clip looks good for us. And then the first thing you're gonna do is just duplicate that layer and then go to effects and presets and type in CC lens and drag that onto the top layer. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the transform options here and scale it down a little bit so we can play with the size and convergence. So for the size, I like to expand it pretty much until it starts breaking here. You can see it starts ripping apart. So right before that, our case like 125, and then you can play with the convergence too, right before it starts ripping. And that's what I like to do. So now if you can scale it down, you can see we have a pretty similar look. Obviously it's not the exact same, but without having a fisheye or a really wide angle lens, this is probably the closest you're gonna get. And then if you want that like black border that they had, you could just go ahead and add a drop shadow, turn up the opacity, the distance down to zero, and then the softness up to like 100. And depending on how much you want it to be there, you can just duplicate that layer a few times. I think I'm just gonna do two for our case. And now this is pretty much where you just go ahead and animate the keyframes and make your own transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the scale and rotation right at the beginning, maybe scale it up a little bit so it starts zoomed in and it starts a little bit twisted like that. And then go, I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 frames forward and then play with the rotation. If you wanted to do that like bounce effect that he had, I'd recommend starting not directly up and down or 90 degrees, like a random angle. So you can see the footage is like 107 degrees rotated. So if it was starting like this, it'd look a little bit like robotic. Maybe even if it was rotated perfectly 90, it would look a little robotic. I'd recommend just tilting, twisting it a little bit so it seems random almost. And then like I said, 20 frames forward. And we're gonna have it zoom down so it kind of bounces and then rotate the opposite way. Kind of go to zero, but I'm gonna have it go past zero a little bit so it has a little bit of like a bounce twist. Because if you stop right at zero, it would still kind of look a little robotic in my eyes. So that's what we're gonna do to kind of combat that and as well play with the keyframes. And then go to the end and maybe scale it up and then rotate the opposite way. And I'm just gonna go a little past the full rotation. And if you play that, you can see it's kind of cool, but it looks really like digital and forced. So one thing to fix that is go ahead and turn on this motion blur. That's going to already make it look a little bit better. And now you can see that looks a lot smoother already. And then another thing you can do is highlight all the keyframes, right click on it, go to easy or keyframe assistant and click easy ease, or you can press F9 on your keyboard. And now this easy ease should give it a little bit more bounce once it's done rendering out here, you'll see. 
So now it has a little bit more bounce, but the movement of the scale and rotation are at the exact same time. So to get it a little bit more unique looking, to get it looking a little less robotic and just more natural looking, I'm gonna highlight all the rotation keyframes and then go to graph editor. And if you're not familiar with the graph editor, I'd recommend you kind of learning it. It takes a little bit of time to learn in the video, Omar Jones uses the graph editor and he's like actually really, really good at it. So that's why all the motion, the digital zooms, the transitions, all that stuff look really, really smooth. If you're not already familiar with the graph editor, basically what it does is it changes velocity at which everything changes. So if I were to drag this right here forward, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take a longer time to rotate at the beginning and then it's gonna go fast and then it's gonna go slow. Basically, the higher up the graph is, the faster it's gonna be for our case. So I actually want it to spin pretty fast at the beginning and then slow down. So it should spin majority here and then kind of do a little slow. And then I kind of want to do the opposite here. So maybe have it go slow and then fast at the end. And we'll see what that looks like. And I think that looks really, really good actually. And you can go ahead and do that for the scale as well. It's really just dependent on what you want. But I think the reason this works out really well is now because the rotation is moving at a different speed than the scale. So when you went ahead and easy both of them, they were kind of just doing the exact same thing. But now that you went ahead and used the graph editor on one of them, one's moving at a certain rate and then on another is moving at a different rate. And since the clip we're working with is a really short clip, I'm not actually able to have the footage play after the transition. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate both these layers, drag them over, and I'm gonna reverse the time of each of them. And you can see now it'll just do the transition in reverse, which might be a cool effect. I don't know if that's something you guys are into, but if you wanted like a boomerang effect, you could do something like that. Obviously it's a little harsh, but I'm actually not gonna use it for that. I'm gonna use it so it ends. So I just keyframe the scale and rotation back down to normal here, right at the end. So that way it kind of just goes back into a normal clip. Basically this whole entire effect is just going to be you playing around with the keyframes and the graph editor. I think those are the two main things that you're gonna have to use to get a similar look. I noticed there was one clip where it had like the spheres, like three of them and they were kind of sliding side by side. So I'll show you how to do something like that. Basically just go to wherever you want that effect to take place. I'd probably recommend already animating the ball with the rotation and everything, and then right clicking on it, going to pre-compose, but make sure you click move all attributes into the new composition and adjust composition duration to the same span. And then it will open and you can see you'll have the clip plane. And what I'm going to go ahead and do actually is go to composition settings because we want three of them side by side and we also don't want it cutting off at all. So I'm gonna make the height something so it shows the whole clip and then just do roughly enough room for there to be three. And then click Control D. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to change the position. And if you change the position of these orbs, I would recommend going to the largest spot so they don't overlap at all because you can see they get smaller and the gap becomes shorter between them. So maybe for this effect, don't actually go ahead and change the position or the scale of them but it's all your personal preference, so just do whatever you think looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and make three of them. And then we can go ahead and go back into that composition. Now you can see there's three of them side by side, and maybe you want to change the position of this comp. So it starts over here with one, and then you keyframe the position and maybe right where it bounces, it goes all the way to the left one. And you can use these proportional grids to kind of line it up to make sure that you're kind of in center. Most of the time you don't have to be like perfectly, but that looks pretty good for me. And you can see how that rotates all the way over and has that effect right here. It does, I didn't go to like the biggest position, I guess, cause they're overlapping a little, but it looks all right. And uh, for right now, I'm just kind of showing you the concepts and how to do stuff. You can obviously tweak it or whatever. And now you can go ahead and play with the scale or anything basically in this on this pre-comp layer. So you could have it scale in all the time or whatever, just play around with all the settings. You could even add the motion blur back on. It might be a little too much actually, but I think it looks cool like that. And we can also go ahead and if you really wanted to sell the effect, maybe go ahead and change the rotation of the background. So to do that, I'd recommend adding on CC lens. 
maybe just making it so it kind of stretches out that way when you go ahead and rotate. If you go to 45 degrees, it should be the biggest spot where it's going to be the most rotated. So I'd recommend just changing it so it takes up the full clip like that. And you can see we kind of have it break a little bit right there. And once you're at 45 degrees, you shouldn't have to worry about it being black on the corners here. And then go ahead and play with the rotation if you wanted it to match the rotation of the ball here. Just have it do whatever. Click F9. And then I have it spin the same way as the ball, but actually a little bit more. And then also I'm going to have it go back a little bit more and have it a little more intense. And then you can also turn on the motion blur back here. Yeah, so once you go ahead and add the rotation to the background, your transition's pretty much done. I think this transition's really, really clean, and there's a, definitely a bunch of different uses to this concept. I think the biggest thing in this transition actually, though, is really using the graph editor and making your keyframe smooth and the motion smooth. For this, I think it's pretty good looking, but obviously uh, you can spend a lot more time and have something a lot, lot smoother. If you went ahead and play with the graph editor, I'm no expert at the graph editor, but it is a good thing to learn and your clips will look a lot smoother doing that. I'm interested to see what you guys come up with and different ways you can make this effect your own. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. If you have a video or a suggestion of an effect that you want broken down, you can go ahead and DM me on there. That's actually how I found this clip. And it's a great way to get my attention and interact with me outside of YouTube. Support the channel, go over to BrianDelmonte.com, check out my packs and presets, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. All the social medias will be linked down below. That's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.